heading out on this Easter Sunday. But there's still a virus out there, though. Still doing this drive, regardless. So, let's see what happens. It might be Easter, but the churches are closed down. The one I'd be attending is right here, if I were attending, if I were practicing. One nice thing, the church is right by the Mon Railroad. Road. There was a trestle here before the intersection, or across from left to right, on its way to PA. So when my day comes, I'll be buried by the Mon Pa. All right. They bury me by the Mon Pa, perfect. I'm going that way. One thing good about the virus, the roads are empty. Who could ask for more? I guess every cloud has a silver lining. Now in the Baltimore Beltway, which has less traffic as well. Normally on a Sunday, it's three times as traffic. When the road first opened, it was like this. Or maybe a bit less. Might be less traffic, but the traffic that there still is, is being asinine right now. I'm the only person who's not speeding right now. Everyone else is speeding. Or driving improperly, one of the two. One thing about this virus, fewer cars on the road, but the cars that are on the road aren't driving right. As I keep saying, I'm the only person right now doing the proper limit. Oh, there goes Speedy. I told you so. Everybody's still speeding by me. I guess this virus affects people's brains as well. Well, what else can it be? And of course now, with fewer cops out, People will be driving worse as it is. If you're a police out there to stop anybody due to the virus. Half Baltimore's police force is out sick. Or almost. Out on the roads, it shows. Here we go again. The folks are still speeding by. Even tractor trailers. So go figure. And a little while ago, had some motorcycles pass me at about 100 miles an hour. Talk about living dangerously. Anyway, the heading for the city as an elegant. An almost dead empty National Pike. Who could ask for more? And now we're entering the city, as you see. But got the funny feeling not much happening here. Didn't think so. The road's almost empty. And of course, no bubbles. Barry's place. Right now, almost no point in stopping here. Ain't nothing happening. But of course, the buildings on that side are still slated for demolition, especially Kaplan's. But this is by far the emptiest I've seen Ellicott City in recent times. I could do that, what they're doing. I kind of wish I was. You do a bike day, Odyssey. If I ride my bike the way they ride theirs, I signal my turns just as I do in my car. If they're cool bikers, most bikers are not.
Is the wine bin open? That's appropriate. No, it isn't. Sorry, guys. No wine. So stop whining. We've departed the historic district. The flood didn't hit up here at all, apparently. We're not much damage is done up here. He put, because they were too high up. Now on modern day, US-40. Also practically empty. Hope it stays that way. And now on a practically empty Interstate 70. That's different. See this road empty. But we're about to exit here on the Route 32. As long as folks are off the road, I'm gonna take advantage of it. Am I doing the right thing? Now arriving in downtown Sykesville. Old Sykesville Station there, now a restaurant. And apparently, a dead empty Sykesville. One time railroad grade there. A former CSX branch line ran that way. But after that, where did it go? I couldn't tell you. Another former line ran along here at one time. Off the former being the old main line. And ran that direction to a factory. Long pulled up. But I took photos. Not passing through some place called Gamber. We passed through before. Up ahead is MD91, which I'll pick up northbound. Was somebody following me? Today I've been tailgated a few times as well. One I care to be tailgated. Well, so much for social distancing. Now approaching MD140. I'll turn left and go west for a bit. And as long as I'm heading this direction, I'll take old 140 and see if I can find Fred Gwynn's grave again. Here's the church where it's supposed to be, behind there somewhere. I guess I'll, I'll sneak out for a look. And then here in the cemetery, there's a certain grave you have to look for that is marked. And Mr. Gwynn's grave is in front of that marked grave. I think I know the name to look for, so let me look for that name of the marked grave. And so, folks, here it is. The unmarked grave of Fred Gwynn. A.K.A. Herman Munster. Right here. There's a little raised area there, whatever. This is where the gentleman's buried. Fred Wynn's grave. Brought to you by the Bullfrog. All right. Herman Munster, rest in peace. We're all still watching your show. So it's interesting how Mr. Gwynn's grave is unmarked. Maybe to avoid voyeurism or something like that. Or avoid it being desecrated. Just like Jim Morrison's grave in Paris. And again, back north on 91. Now me, myself, I don't think I want to say my train plot. Instead, cremate me and sprinkle my ashes along the Mon Pa. Yep. 
Sprinkle the ashes on the Mod Pod, that's just fine. I'll take that. We still have the cool old stuff there, though. My kind of structure. And we'll soon be in a place called Boring. Let's hope it isn't. The crossing of the one time Western Maryland line, now run by CSX. And I believe here is boring. Another crossing of it, along with the boring train station. Now it's a post office. There you have it. And over there, not so boring bingo. Even boring te technologies. How about that? I'm looking north in the former Western Maryland line. Now CSX. We're now crossing it. Or I should say recrossing it. A nice new car there. Going back out the way we came in. Is this place really that boring? As I said, thanks to the virus, there might be less traffic, but the traffic that remains can be very wacky, I guess. I'm again being tailgated. And again, so much for social distancing. Proceeding north on MD-30. One more crossing at the former Western Maryland line, now CSX, north being that way. Back in 84, they had a bad derailment there, where bus cars came off the track and rolled down the road here to the bottom of the hill. Cool sight to see. Now passing through Manchester, Maryland. I just got a text. Once again, pit stop time. You guessed it. Our usual. And over there are spaces with my name on them. I'll go claim one. Well, wouldn't you? If your name was on it? That's me. Okay, more time lapse here. About to depart. Right back on Route 30, northbound. That'd be a day despite the virus out there. Temps in the mid 60s. And everything's getting green out there again. And soon we'll, we'll be crossing state lines. Right here. North of the border, Pennsylvania, the biggest pencil. But here in PA, there's a bigger warning about the coronavirus. There's more of it up here. So did I do the right thing, crossing state lines? I guess I'll find out. We should be okay here. We're far enough away from New Jersey. And again, a cool farm. At least these are still here. The virus didn't get them yet. Still, practically empty roads. What more can one ask, as I keep saying? Just picked up another road. I guess I'll take the scenic route back to the city before curfew time. 
they want us all to stay home now. Like a modern day version of house arrest. Without the ankle bracket, bracelet, whatever. Is it house arrest? Or is it martial law? That's a tough one. But a beer gonna turn again. East on 216. Go through the state park area. Heading east. But I believe the compass direction is southeast. Well, what do you do? Close enough. They're approaching our state park, as in Codorus. Or Codorus, however you say it. We're in PA, pick your pronunciation. And there's the lake. Get out of the car to give you another view of Codorus Lake. With some folks enjoying it in a boat. Got a couple of ducks here. Hey Donald, what's happening? Donald? That could mean someone else. Of course there'll be waterfowl here because of the water. That's obvious. Now departing, departing the park area. I'll keep on shooting video as long as my battery holds up. And up here again. Another cross on that same Western Maryland line we saw before. The one line out of Baltimore I haven't ridden yet myself. I've ridden all the others though. Still, nice having peaceful roads. For the wrong reason though. There's that old Western Maryland line again. As you pass through a place called Glenville. And now I'm a part of this road I haven't seen in a while. I should be in Glen Rock pretty soon, but we'll see what happens. should be arriving in Glen Rock. Yep, we are. There's the sign. We didn't often enter from this road this direction. That's why it didn't look the same to me. But we're in Glen Rock. Up here is PA 616. We normally come out of there and arrive in this town. That's why it looked different. But up ahead it still looks the same. But I think I'll turn south on 616. It's been a while. Now departing Glen Rock on our usual route. When I quote the word usual, don't come out here much th th these days anymore. Now about to pass beneath the Northern Central, now a bike trail up there, which I've pedaled many times. An SUV stopped for me? That's different. Normally it's the other way around. I gotta stop for them because they're bigger. Hmm. I thought size didn't matter. And once again arriving in good old new freedom. And here be our last stop, the New Freedom train station. But no longer used as such.
now it's the Rail Trail Cafe and serves as a pit stop for hikers and bikers and folks riding the trains as well, the excursion trains. The trains board about two blocks down. They should board here at the station. Make more sense. But unfortunately across the way, more new stuff going up. Condos and things. Last I stopped here, they weren't there. Been that long since I stopped here. I'm gonna tell the I believe 70s or 80s, there was a wire factory over there, which I have shots of after it closed down. Now look what's going there. But there it is, a sign of the times. New Freedom itself sits atop of Pars Ridge, as other places do, like Mount Airy, Maryland. This is the high point between Baltimore and New York. And to the north. Get that back on my bike one day. There's your buy your tickets for the train ride, or something like that. And as they depart from these days over there. And there is their GP10. Something else over here as well. And now getting out of New Freedom. Back into the scenery, if you want to call it that. Just now cross back into Maryland. We still got a ways to go though. Now coming into Oakland, Maryland. Well, one of the three Oaklands Maryland has. There was a spur off the Northern Central serving an industry around here, but I'm not sure where it ran. And up ahead, the Central, on the grade there. I think a driveway there could have been part of the old grade that ran to the factory or to the industry. Hit the Central one more time with oncoming traffic. As I said, they're bigger. I gotta wait for them. I guess once again, size does matter. All right, I'm in the clear. I think. We're now coming into a place called Maryland Line, where I will turn right to head south on the original route from Baltimore to York. Now we're south on MD 45. Formerly US 111. And downtown Maryland Line. It's south of the Pennsylvania Line, so it's called Maryland Line. There you go. I figured it out. Now departing. Nice old gas station there. Wonder how far back it ran. Speaking of running, where's the fire? But again, gotta love these empty roads. Thank you, coronavirus. Keep up the good work. I'm here to pick up I-83 southbound and see what traffic is on it. A nearly empty I-83. Fantastic. With the roads like this, I should take a full-fledged Odyssey. I have the roads to myself, practically. Got cloudy out there. Looks like a hard rain's gonna fall, as Bob Dylan said. And again, I'm in car on the road, doing the proper limit. Everyone else is speeding. Less traffic, but the traffic left over, they're all jackasses. I guess the virus affects your brain, not just your body or your lungs. The sign up there says, save lives, stay home, essential travel only. 
Did I ought to see be essential? Oh, y'all tell me. And then back on the road that we began on, the Baltimore Beltway, and folks are still speeding by me. But everybody's speeding for some reason. Again, the little person who's not speeding. The only car not speeding. Is it the virus or just plain stupidity? Or both? Fewer folks on the road, but the ones left behind are jerks. Here comes one, the left lane. Just flashed my lights at him, didn't do any good. But I flashed my lights at you to the cop. And now back in our part of the world, approaching our exit. In fact, up there on that ledge, the mom pa once ran. I never mentioned it though. So whenever I get off here, we pass the mom pa. From there and around over there. All right, get off the freeway. Back to surface streets. And now we're entering Baltimore City. Big deal. Still interesting how the virus affects people's brains along with their lungs. I would never have suspected that if I didn't see it with my own two eyes. And back in our hood, around 7 p.m. Today our drive was 150 miles. Not bad. Except for the traffic. If there is less traffic, thanks to the virus. But the traffic that remains is very bad, as you saw. There's no law out there. It's all lawless right now. Big time lawless on those streets. Even off the streets as well sometimes. As I keep saying, thank you very much for the privilege of your time and for stopping by my channel. Much appreciated. And to all my subscribers and regular viewers, please stay well.